All right, I'd like to call to order the uh, Township of LaPacon regular meeting for February 5th, 2020. I would ask that everyone bow their head for a moment of silence, please. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided indicating the time and place of the meeting in accordance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975. By advertising a notice in the Star Gazette and the Express Times, and by posting a copy on the bulletin board in the municipal building. Roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro. Here. Councilman Toledo. Here. Councilman Bright. Here. Council President Pryor. Here. Here. Uh, need a motion to come out of executive session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Katrina? Uh, council was in executive session for approximately one hour. The topics of discussion are as listed on your agendas, number one through four. The minutes from executive session will be available at such time as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. All right, thank you. Public comment and agenda items. John. Just a question. Yes. Uh, please explain the, cap, the uh, establishment of the cap bank again. You want to explain that? Do you know it? No. Well, I can just read. Go ahead. Oh, we've got the resolution. Okay, so we have an ordinance that we adopt every year. Uh, it's the local government cap law provides that in preparation of its annual budget, and municipalities shall limit any increase in said budget to 2.5 percent unless authorized by ordinance to increase to 3.5 percent over the previous year's final appropriations. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing now we're moving to old business. Number one is uh, the minutes, executive and or regular sessions for December 30th, 2019, January 2nd, January 15th, and January 27th. Go motion. Motion. Go second. Second. Roll call that. Councilman Dalcara. I abstain from December 30th. And yes, and the other, the other two, three. Councilman Polito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Pryor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I think, I'm trying to think, was it the 15th I missed? Yeah. I missed the 15th. Yeah. You're away. Yeah. All right, number two is ordinance number 20-01, second reading in public hearing to amend, revise, and supplement chapter 101 entitled Dogs, Cats, and Other Animals to add additional language to address prohibit the feeding of wild animals on private property. Have a motion to open up. Made a motion. Second. Second. Folks, questions, comments? Seeing none, motion to close. Motion. Second. Motion on the ordinance. I'll make the motion. Second. Councilman Belcaro. <coughs> yes. Councilman Toledo. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Pryor. Yes. Yes. Under new business, number one is to authorize Elizabethtown Gas to replace gas mains in the vicinity of North Prospect Street. The mayor well, just, yeah, the gas company su uh, submitted correspondence to the township. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with the area on North Prospect Street, they have a facility, a station over in that area, and there's a gas main that runs uh, north. Uh, along the stream corridor that's in a township owned property. That stream corridor has been experiencing significant scour. As you may recall, about three years ago, we had to relocate a sewer line. Their gas main is exposed. So the gas company has come up with a plan to deal with that. They're proposing to get an easement from a private property owner that has a single family house, run through that house run through a portion of the high school property and turn left into the Beers Avenue right of way, which is not developed in that area. It's east of the uh, DPW facility. So the um, gas company submitted some uh, correspondence to their consulting engineer to uh, make sure that the township doesn't have a problem with this particular proposal. So that's why this is on the agenda tonight. But they really need to do something because of the fact that their gas main is exposed right now in that stream corridor. Same property? As, as a sewer line? The same property as a sewer line adjacent to the Potts residence. Yep. 
So I don't have a problem with it. They, uh, the gas company obviously has to take, uh, obtain easements from the property owner as well as the uh, Phillipsburg School District as well in order to get in position to be able to get into the Beers Avenue right of way. Gentlemen, questions, comments? No. No motion? Make a motion. A second? Second. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman Polito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Price. Yes. Yes. Uh, number three is to authorize Mayor Manguchi to execute TWA for Strikers Road. Do we do the cap bank? Or oh, I'm sorry, number two. Uh, <coughs> Strikers is to establish a cap bank. Can I comment before we do sure. it? Sure. I, uh, I don't know if this is the way you were explaining, but the uh, half listen, some of this is coming back to me as I read it. This is what I get, what I remember is that we can uh, authorize increasing the cap to three and a half percent but that doesn't mean we have to spend that in the current year That's so if we authorize less than the three and a half percent we can take the that difference and bank it that's where the cap bank comes from and we can use it in a succeeding year the next two years that's Am I right. about right that is right okay that that's it okay um, so I will make the motion to establish the cap bank. Second. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman Zito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Fryer. Yes. Yes. Uh, number three. So authorize Mayor Manguchi to execute a TWA for Strikers Road Associates. I am going to suggest that we table that for a month, um, and I'll explain why. This came up at the planning board. Um, at the time, we noted there were a number of issues here at Strikers Road. It's the new uh, warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of issues. I said, if we don't address them now, we'll have to address them later. Um, they weren't addressed at the planning board. And my point is, our wastewater management plan, which sets forth our excess capacity, hasn't been updated since 2012. And a lot has happened since then in terms of flows, in terms of new development, changes in planned development, and so on. Uh, so I think as a minimum, I don't feel comfortable uh, doing that until I see the allocation and I see it against the professional assessment of the flows. So I would like to authorize our sewer engineer to do that. And I would like to table this for a month till we all see the report there was discussion of upgrading of the pump station there's pros and cons to that I think we should uh, evaluate that at the same time I don't even know if it's going to be a private pump station or not so um, I think we have to resolve all those issues before we act on a TWA it's my opinion John? okay Okay. Um, also, just to follow up on that, I was contacted by the attorney for Stricker Road Associates. They're looking for a developer's agreement consistent with their approval, so I will be working on that and hope to have that to you at your market. Yeah, it makes sense to kind of tie all in. Right. Need a roll call on that to table it? I need a motion. Motion. Second. 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 To table, right? Yep. Table. All right. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman Polito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Fryer. Yes. Yes. The consent agenda items one through twelve. Anybody want anything pulled off of there? Seeing and hearing none. I have a motion on the consent agenda. Motion. <coughs> second. 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 Uh, Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman Polito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman <coughs> Yes. Council reports. Mr. Polito. Thank you. Um, LAA, they had their meeting in January with the new president, Sean Leahy. He would like to meet with you and me to discuss the LAA contract with the town. I don't know if okay. he's, I don't know, has he reached out to you? Yes, he has. Okay. Had a meeting with him last, uh, was it Friday? Maybe, maybe last Friday. So, okay. we'll, we'll, I'll fill you in on Okay, thank you, and that's all. Luke? Yeah, we have a, uh, Brian, uh, damage to a sewer line. Yeah. How's that going? Canterbury. 
on Canterbury, you have uh, Bradford Court, you have Anthony Ferris. <coughs> Pardon? I was just coughing, sorry. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> up by Bradford Court, about eight feet down, the sewers are all blocked with those little roots, and it looks like there's a break in there and a half. And then down further, coming from Hampton, coming back up about eight feet in, the same thing's going on, but no roots. All right, and then we have another one. Uh, I don't remember the address right now, but on Rugby Road, um, I think 704, but don't hold me to that exactly. All right, um, a couple of years ago, 2008, they had redone their lateral and it sunk and everything else, and their whole thing is shut down in roots. It got open a little bit now, but the uh, school roots and the pipes all center, so that's become ours by the right way. So there are two that are hitting the table right now. Are they working on it now? It's being worked on as we speak, not worked on, but being put together. Okay. As we speak. So in the meantime, the sewer is flowing, correct? Well, we don't know what's flowing, how much flowing. It's been doing it. It's, we're, we're working on trying to get it as soon as possible. Right, I understand. It's, it's an emergency or whatever we've got to do. The other seven of four is, is cleared out enough that she's okay for, you know, a little bit of time, but we've got to get to it. Okay. All right. And then why I'm at it, I'm also addressing an issue of Frank <coughs> Avenue. I believe that's also a 700 block. Don't hold me to my 400 block. Um, one side of the storm drain to the other side of the storm drain, there's no water running between one side to the other. All right, but it's, it's uh, rolling down into one and it's going down into the bird side. So tomorrow I'm going to let the storm drain. Aqua's been out and said it's not theirs. We don't deal with water. I'm going to take a sample, go up to the pool and do a sample. If it turns out pink, it's, it's actually Aqua's water. And uh, I will reach out to them and tell them to fix that. If that's it, if not, we got another issue somewhere that has to be looked into. Okay. All right, but it doesn't look like sewer in any fashion. Okay. They put dye down it and didn't travel anywhere. Thank you. All right. That's it, Mayor. All right, thank you. Bill? Uh, let's see. The other thing I have is. Um, the ordinance that we approved tonight, um, the neighbor who was complaining about our vulture problem has said there hasn't been one bird there since the gentleman was approached and told to stop putting food out. So <clears throat> hopefully that will fix it and hopefully nobody else will do that anymore. And that was the second time since January of 18, I believe. Yep. So, okay. That's it. All right. That's it. Joe? I have a couple of things. Uh, December 30th, the closeout meeting, I had uh, proposed a pothole hotline. I don't think that's moved. I'd, I'd really like Beth, you and I, you, I you, you, you can <coughs> comment on it. Okay, yeah, fine. I'll comment on it. So uh, Ryan and I sat down, we had a discussion. Um, we thought we would, we would put uh, per permanently on the website, you know, the pothole hotline, you can call the clerk's office or you can call and leave a message at the Department of Public Works. Um, Brian has, uh, you know, gotten a, uh, a certain book that we're going to keep a log of every call that comes in uh, and when that pothole is addressed. Or whatever the deficit disposition yeah. is, you know. yeah. Okay. Good. So. Great. And how soon do you think they get that going? I can tell Lori tomorrow to put it on. Super. Thank Super. you. Super. Thank You're you welcome. both. Uh, the Sally Port, Paul, you going to talk about that? Yes, I will. Okay. Um, the fire chief's report. We got a nice report from the fire chief. He suggested two ordinances in there, and I I don't know whether they're feasible or not. I don't know if uh, they're consistent with practice or not. I, I don't want to dismiss them. Uh, Paul, if you could look at those from the utility standpoint, and Katrina, if you could look at that. And uh, not really write anything, just tell us if you think there's merit to Can it. Can you send me the report? What was that? The, the fire. The fire chief's report. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to be cutting edge and have something nobody else has. On the other hand, if that makes sense, we'll develop something. We have the chief here if you want to, if you want to elaborate on that, chief. So currently we have a construction project in town, Autumn Ridge, on 357, which is between 57 and Baltimore Street, and it was brought to our attention there is no working fire hydrants within the development, which is an obvious safety hazard. Yeah. It was uh, brought to the fire official's attention. He addressed it with the developer. The developer said it would be up and running at the end of the week. 
it was checked on again by the members of uh, Station 2, and there was no uh, operational fire hydrants near hydrants 900 feet away at Route 57 and Strikers Road. Um, it was also said by the developer there would be a 24-hour fire watch, which is also not being provided. So uh, I addressed that with the fire official. To uh, I asked them to violate them and fine them for not providing a fire watch. Uh, I have not gotten an update from the fire official yet on that aspect. But I requested that a ordinance be drafted and hopefully passed by council to require any uh, future <coughs> developments that are built and framework starts being put up that operational fire hydrants are in place before that is done. Further, uh, it was brought to our attention that there was construction material blocking access for apparatus getting in and out or getting access to the buildings. So I asked for council to draft and pass an ordinance requiring that access is granted to the fire department and always be access to the fire department. Yeah, I don't uh, disagree with the concept the devil's in the details a lot and you have to draft these things carefully. And I have questions. I mean, what if it was subdivision where there, there was no water, would they be required to have a 24 hour fire watch? I don't know. Um, and that, those are the sort of things I need to flesh out before we begin to attack, um, you know, the language. Right. That's an ongoing I appreciate construction by the report. That's a great thought, appreciate, uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, but are we responsible for it? <clears throat> well, obviously you just don't want it to burn, but what, what, what's the liability on that? <coughs> oh, it's if we go in there. Exactly. Well, if, 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 I, I'm not sure if they even, as part of the plan, to put hydrants in that site. Oh, there's fire hydrants. Mm. Oh, oh, there no, is. He, he, they're just not operational. Oh, they're not operational. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quite well, honestly. When you write the ordinance, you got to cover a lot of conditions. And, yeah. um, it's not occupied it's separated he carries his own fire insurance i i, I don't know these are all questions i have there yeah. you just gotta look at a safety standpoint for all yeah. are yeah. concerned yeah. you don't want something that's trying to be built to be burned down quite frankly i, I used to i used to spend a lot of time in newark and i've, so. I've watched buildings be allowed to burn down mm -hmm. you know they were vacant i i saw firemen let them burn uh, so yeah. i don't know i don't want that to happen here no. yeah all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to call the developer tomorrow because the water mains are in that development. I, I don't understand why the hydrants aren't functional okay. at this point. So I, I will find that out and I'll talk to Mr. Gardner. That's great. Okay. Lou, thank you. Yep. Uh, the last thing is we um, had authorized the, uh, a new connection fee ordinance. Um, that seems to be laying in pieces. I asked Kim to quarterback that thing and reach out to all the parties involved and uh, see if we can't get that together by next meeting. Okay. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah I was going to ask about that because uh, Mr. Orth had contacted me several days ago and was requesting my involvement with the connection fee ordinance and I told them that I needed to run that by the, the uh, Township Council. Uh, you know, it's really the Council's uh, call here. Perhaps, you know, the CFO might be able to come up with the, with the uh, information to be able to put together well, the there, ordinance. There's, so. there's flow information, you have to come up with a number of EDUs, but then there's also financial information, you have to come up with the investment in the system, there's calculation and the legal, the legal framework has to be right. So there's really three parties involved, and um, I just thought Kim was in a good position. I, I, it has to, the responsibility has to go to somebody, I'd rather go to a municipal employee, and I ask him to take ownership over it. So, so should I tell Mr. Orth that uh, Kim is taking the lead on this and I'm not going to yeah. be involved? Okay. No, no, you'll be involved, but okay. no. she'll, it's her job to make sure everybody does their job and this all comes together. Okay. All right. I understand. Thank you. Is that it? Because you can't finish it without her information and she probably has the toughest part pulling information together. Okay. You're good. That's it. I'll let Derek know that then. Thank you. Right. Could you move up? Sure. There was one matter from executive session that requires action. If someone wants to make a motion to authorize your township administrator to send a letter, we discussed in the executive session regarding the personnel matter. I like that motion. Motion. 
Councilman Bill Parent. Yes. Councilman Leo. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilperson Pryor. Yes. Ken, I, I just got yes. back to my report. I had asked for authorization for the sewer engineer to uh, update the flow and capacity data. Can we make a motion? I'll on make that? that motion. I'll second. I can't. I shouldn't second. I'll second. Okay. Councilman Bell Harris. Yes. Councilman Vito. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Council President Pryor. I'm going to abstain. Yes. All right. Other than that, folks, um, I don't want to say we're running smooth. I might sound like Donald Trump, but anyway, uh, we're doing we're doing pretty well right now. Having a very light winter, uh, which is good, uh, which means we're not spending any money on overtime, we're not spending any money on salt, and we're not beating up our roads and our equipment. So so far so good. Keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully, another six weeks uh, we'll be done with it. Right on, except four weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So other than that, uh, we passed a salary ordinance for our employees tonight. I think this is the earliest we ever passed a salary ordinance for our employees. Um, so everybody's up to date. Uh, so going forward, we'll be able to look at things a little bit better. Because I think the last couple of years we passed a salary ordinance of what November. Yeah. So, yeah. <coughs> it's ridiculous. You know, it's, you know it's coming. So just deal with it. Um, that's it for me. Paul. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to bring the council up to, uh, to speed on a few projects. Uh, just so the council is aware, we're already working on the Plaza Road neighborhood road improvement project and the uh, Baltimore Street Red School Lane traffic signal project. So those projects are, you know, in, we're, we're involved or in progress at this point. Regarding the second phase of the Red School Lane project, I will have resolutions for you at the next meeting. The intent is to build that job in April at this point, so we're on schedule to do that. Regarding regarding Laos Hollow Road, uh, we have analyzed that road, um, and certainly um, you have the ability, I guess, physically to install drainage on that road, but I believe it's going to be very expensive to do that, both from a construction perspective and a permitting perspective. You, you actually need to do some extensive permitting with the Department of Environmental Protection, and you'll probably need some easements. So the council needs to make a decision whether or not you want to go through that exercise, or would you rather do some overlay, mill and overlay work to try to upgrade the rideability of the road and, and improve the road. You actually have a pretty good pavement width there. There's no, it, it's not like Fox Farm Road where we have very narrow pavement. It's very difficult to navigate through. You actually have pretty, pretty decent width there. And we probably um, we probably could do a good job with it with it with an overlay there to improve the current condition at this point. Um, so it's really a decision. It doesn't have to be anything you have, would have to make tonight. But um, you know that's that's the key decision on that roadway is is whether or not you want to install. When I say drainage, I'm talking about storm sewer piping and having a formal outfall. And this would be above where Brian did the repairs last year. There is significant water coming off the mountain and onto that road and across that road in a number of locations. When I say significant, more than 50 acres in a number of a number of locations. Did you see anything while you were up there? Because again, that area really hasn't changed all that much over over the last say 15, 20 years as to why there's so much water coming down off of there now. We had an abnormally uh, rainy one-year period from July of 2018 to the end of the summer of 2019. 50% uh, more rain on average than what you would normally have in Warren County. Uh, and this is countywide. And uh, the ground could not handle it. And this was happening in other municipalities. And you, you had a, a lot more base flow in, in the streams. You had a lot of springy conditions come up as a result of that. The water bleeding out of the ground because it couldn't take it. And as a result, uh, you know, you had a lot more runoff um, as, a, as a result of that situation. My suggestion, Paul, is um, like all these projects, if there's alternatives, if you'd give us a one-page memo that just says these are the two alternatives, here's the cost range, uh, then we try and fit it in with our whole financial program sure. and see what we want to do. I'll bet for you for the next meeting. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Agree. 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Fox Farm, Fox Farm Road and, and Wells Hollow, it, 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 it's, a, it's a tough one for me personally because of the fact that I, I'm not about the cheap fix, um, but we need to do something up there to facilitate. Excuse me, Ralph. Oh, sorry. We need we need to do something up there to facilitate that road because it's it's almost as bad as the industry was over here. And I I realize that you know I don't want to say the little people, but the, the, those people pay taxes like everybody else does. And whether there's 50 homes on a road or 10, the people still pay taxes. And it's a rough ride up there. It's been a rough ride up there for years. Fox Farm Road. I've actually had more complaints from Harmony residents than than Lopat. Um, we've walked that road. I think Bill and I were up there what over a year ago. It, <laughs> To just, to just overlay is really not it's not a long-term solution but I, I, I just don't see um, with all respect to Joe's I mean he's absolutely right let's look at our alternatives and we will do that I just don't see in the long run how to have, we could afford it um, but based on Joe's recommendation we'll wait till next right. next meeting so I will memo for you just piggybacking on what Brian talked about before a number of uh, areas of sewer problems um, uh, in the aftermath of the sinkhole in December over on Wordsworth Lane, that whole sewer line was videoed and we have the results back and there is a sag in the line. It's not at the location that we fixed, it's it's more toward Harwich. So uh, if we're going to have a contractor come in to take care of these other areas, we will probably have to do this uh, sag area as well on, on Wordsworth close to uh, Harwich. So just to advise the council on that at this point. Sorry for the bad news. Um, continuing on, uh, tomorrow meeting with the county engineer. The county engineer did put out a, a review letter on the Upper Belvedere Road side sidewalk project, and we're meeting with the county engineer to get a, get an understanding to some of the comments. And uh, actually, I would like to see some of the, the comments retracted. So I'm meeting with the uh, county engineer tomorrow to go over that with him. And then lastly, uh, I did have the opportunity last Friday to talk to two council members as well as the mayor regarding the salary board. As you may recall, at our meeting on the 27th of January, the bids were rejected and I was not given authorization to go back out to bid as the current as the plans are currently constituted. And uh, the council members as well as the mayor indicated that in light of the high bids that were received and also in light of the statutory criteria for sally port which you know there's really not that much in a, in a way of state cr uh, criteria for sally port um there, there's a need to to simplify and lessen what is on these plans right now before we go out to bid uh so example of that is uh there, were, there was um, a design feature put into the plans to actually put a brick that's similar to the bricking that's on this uh, particular building around all sides and the feeling is is that's just overkill at this point in light particularly in light of the uh, bins that were received so uh, we're going to be looking at uh, taking off that bricking and doing a stucco um, we're going to be looking at uh, some of the finishes inside the building and be talking to the public works department about the public works department doing those finish work that is such as painting uh we we're looking at taking out a storage area that was in this in the uh the fence storage area inside the uh, sally port we're going to be looking at having a portable uh, handicap ramp as opposed to um, a structural handicap ramp that was uh, shown on the plans that had handrails that was going to require a lot of masonry construction and it was also going to occupy a lot of space within the uh, sally port itself and there's other other things that were talked about i know councilman Pryor asked me to revisit some of the parking lot work that um, is necessitated due to the way the drainage was constructed on the site many years ago but i'm going to see if there's a different way to slice it that could cut some dollars from this overall project but the, the main message that came out of the meeting last friday was we need to simplify and uh this uh this particular project and lessen the uh, scope of the improvements and, and try to get the cost down significantly on this project yeah, so i'd ask you to work on that for the month paul and um do as much by addendum as you can. Uh, I don't want to see a whole lot of more, you know, more drafting go into this. And come back next month. But you can make a presentation on council yeah. and right. see how everybody feels. Okay. So 
that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Right. <coughs> Chief, other than uh, what you sent us, anything for tonight? Just uh, one announcement. Thank you. Yes. So uh, we we just had a retirement in the uh, in the police department, and yep. um, Patrolman Travis Smith, after uh, 25 years of service has uh, decided to retire effective um, the first of this month. So uh, we congratulate him on his uh, service. 19 of those 25 years were spent right here in Lopacon Township. And uh, he was uh, well served in, in the township. And uh, we thank you, thank him for his, his service and wish him the very best in the, his retirement. So that's, we uh, thank him as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mayor Council. Thank you. <coughs> Need a motion to approve department reports? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve bills? Motion. Second. Yes. 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 Uh, I do have one other thing. Sunday afternoons, um, not every Sunday afternoon, but Sunday afternoons, I usually take a ride around. Try and hit every section of the township. Um, going forward, it, it, there's a there's some things out there that need to be cleaned up. Uh, cars aren't registered and whatnot. We're gonna we're gonna do our best to see what we can do to get them removed and whatnot. So there's a lot of junk out there. Um, some properties are not what I feel they should be. I don't know what the what the reasonings are. If people are falling on hard times or what. Uh, but what we see that we can clean up, we will clean up. <coughs> I think we owe it to the to the other taxpayers to try and keep our properties up as well as we can to keep our values up as well as we can so let the word go forth i guess that uh, you know we're going to be looking uh, we're not we're not here to you know bang anybody over the head with anything but um if there's some things we see that are illegal but we're gonna we're gonna be on it so folks questions comments john yes um the same partially the same question um has, has any further movement been made in the rent bubbling board? We advertise continually for it. Okay. Have not had anybody come forward, forward to volunteer, so no. Okay. All right. Um, and the other thing is, is at one of our Break the Gardens Tennis Organization meetings, some, some people brought up the fact of, of uh, handicap spots mm -hmm. and the way the landlord is handling it. It's private property. He's handling it with it, yep. where you can purchase a, a you know a sign and seventy dollars a year. It's eighty eighty dollars a year, but it has gone up to over a hundred dollars now. Okay. And somebody specifically asked if there was any way that uh, you know they can get a free they can get a handicap spot without that. Um, and the other thing I want to ask, right, is because I was out in a complex um, yesterday over near Ellen Ellen M Building. There is a handicap, a dark blue handicap sign with a green pole, which is odd there. It has no apartment number on it, um, which is the way that the the ones for the eighty dollars and now the hundred over a hundred dollar ones mm -hmm. have the apartment number on them. So I was wondering what that, how that got there, or what that was about, or um, anything like that. Now I know. I know the chief has spoken to us about the private property issue of, of the handicapped mm -hmm. spots and how that is the the the, the landlord has, has the right to do what he does because his grandfather because we built before the um, ADA ADA um, laws. So, um, is there any any anything else um, that can possibly be done for these people? I mean, they're they're mm -hmm. in their eighties, ninety. You know. Private property, we really can't. We have no jurisdiction. Okay, I'll, have to, so. I'll have to tell them that again. I, I've yeah. told them that in the past, and when I talk to them personally, I tell them that too, but they okay. keep asking. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's about it. All right, John. Thank, thank you very much, Mayor. Thanks, Council. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Yeah, I got one. Sale on management? Why did the county council let them raise the rent every year? Additional security, and it ain't put into the building. I'm not a beekeeper, so I don't need yellow jackets flying around my apartment. Well, Ralph, first of all, we, we do have a the rent increase ordinance here in the township. That's first and foremost. What they're allowed to do out there and what they do with their money really is their business. We don't have any jurisdiction over that. So that would be a question. And maybe for you, know, if you attend your next um, Red Gardens Tenants Organization meeting and 
certainly bring it up to them. If there's something we can do for you, we will do it. Yeah. Well, with the building is sick. Yeah, they pray for the lot in there. Storm winters are shot. I don't need bees flying around outside my apartment. And then the guy in charge of maintenance, he's about as lazy as they come. Well, that's an issue you need to take up with, with their apartment manager over there. That's not something that, that we can do. So. All right. John? Just, just about that, about the windows. It's been expressed to Paul Donovan more than a few times as the CFO, and he said, no windows. That's just the way that he keeps saying. Wait, that's a lazy clown. He keeps, he keeps saying that. Yes. All right. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Seeing none, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Folks, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Uh,